As an English teacher, I write the same thing on paper after paper. If you're in a situation like that, if you find yourself writing the same thing over and over and over again, I've got a tool for you. That tool is a program called Text Expander. It's available for Windows, that's the one I use, but it's also available on the Mac, on iPhone and iPad, not Android, unfortunately, but it's cross-platform and it syncs in the cloud. So what is it? Well, as the name suggests, it's a text expander. It replaces a snippet or abbreviation with something longer. It might be a word, a phrase, a sentence, even something longer. And it works globally. I'm demonstrating this in Word, but it works in Gmail, Evernote, it works in my journal. Basically, if you can type in a program, Text Expander will work. Now, I use it a lot in a lot of different contexts, but I'll focus on the two main ways I use it as an English teacher uh, commenting on papers and more general communication with students and colleagues. So let's talk about commenting on papers first. For the most part, I use it for brief comments in the margins. Say a student confuses affect and effect. I highlight the word, I hit Control alt m to make a comment. That's just Microsoft Word, right? And then I type my snippet. Voila, the snippet expands to a whole sentence. If it's something I might have to type several times in one paper, I can have a longer explanation the first time, and then a simpler version for the second time it appears. And if they keep doing the same thing, and I don't want to point it out every time, I can even have a third snippet like this. So let's look at Text Expander for a moment so I can show you how these work. On the left side here are groups. Just ways to organize your snippets if you want to. I do, but you know, you don't have to. Up in the upper right hand corner is a search box, so you can always find your snippets, even if you keep them in one bucket. Uh, down here at the bottom is the snippet or abbreviation. I use the same format for all of them, so I don't have to remember as much. I start with a period, then something I can easily remember, and then an apostrophe. Some people start with an X or a Z or a semicolon. The idea is to avoid something that might naturally occur when you're typing. I choose a period because my finger knows where it is. And the only time there isn't a space after it is if it's a web address. And, you know, the apostrophe at the end makes it unlikely that that will ever be a problem for me. Up here is the text that will replace the snippet. To create a new snippet, you click on the group where you want it to appear. You click New Snippet. <laughs> uh, type in the text you want to abbreviate. Uh, if you want to include formatting, choose Formatted Text from the Content drop-down and then Format the Text. Give it a label so you can find it on the list to the left. Create the snippet or abbreviation and well, there you have it, a simple snippet. Now, Text Expander is much more powerful than that. I'll come back and show you a more involved snippet, but I don't really have many snippets that are more intricate than what I've just shown you. So let's get back to commenting on papers. In addition to the marginal comments, which are going to be the same from student to student, I also write personalized comments at the end of their papers. But even these personalized comments can have uh, boilerplate sections, like a general invitation to ask questions, or instructions for setting up a meeting, things like that. Basically, anything you find yourself writing a few times is fair game for a snippet. Now, as I said before, I try to make my snippets memorable. So, for example, in the case of affect versus effect, I've actually created two snippets, one with each spelling. I can type either one, and I get the same replacement text. 
Even so, I've accumulated a lot of snippets, and some I rarely use. There's no way I can remember them all. But Text Expander has a nice pop-up search. In whatever program I'm working in, I just hit Control slash, find my snippet, and select it. It's that easy. So that's how I use Text Expander for commenting on students' papers. It increases clarity. I've honed some of the messages over time. Uh, and it saves time, though I'll admit that I often use that saved time on more in-depth personal comments. Uh, but that's certainly not a bad thing. It frees me up to comment a bit more meaningfully. But as I said, as an English instructor, I also use Text Expander for more general communication with students and colleagues. I'm going to show you just one example of that. And then, uh, since this example is a little more involved than the other examples I've shown, uh, I'll show you how the snippet is set up. Now, one of my jobs is to assign classes to our part-time faculty. Uh, to let them know what we're offering them, I used to use templates in Gmail. Uh, but you can see that I have to make changes for each email. I have to remember to replace the X's. I have to remember to delete either the Marysville or Sutter location and so on. And believe me, I mess them up more often than I want to admit. But Text Expander has features that help with that, that save me time and make it less likely that I'll forget any of the information. So I open a new email message, I type the snippet in the subject line, and in this case, a form pops up. Now this is completely customized. Uh, I built this from scratch. Uh, like I said, I'll show you the snippet a little later, but look what I've been able to do. First, since these fields are both labeled term, typing in the one box automatically fills the other. And then there's this tab. Now in Gmail, if your cursor is in the subject line and you hit tab, the cursor moves into the message area. And that's what this tab does. It will move the rest of the expanded text into the message. For the locations, which I too often forgot when I was using templates, I've created a drop-down list. Here, I can choose among three different options. And you can have optional information. You can check or uncheck the box according to whether you want the information to show or not. Red means it won't show up in the expanded text. Green means it will. And since I use different signatures for my different roles at the college, I have a different snippet for each one. In this message, I'm serving as comp coordinator, so I've included a snippet for that comp coordinator signature within the larger snippet. I've entered the information, I click OK, and boom, there it is. The term in both subject line and message, the name, uh, the course being offered, and the appropriate signature. Now I said I'd show you that snippet, so, so uh, let me do that now. It may look a little complicated, but it's really not. Uh, the learning curve isn't steep at all, and the company has a bunch of really short, really clear tutorials on their site. On the other hand, if you want it to be more complicated, you can even incorporate JavaScript into your snippets. But uh, that's way beyond me. I don't know JavaScript. Uh, more important, I've never come across anything I couldn't do with the stuff I've shown you here. Uh, that email snippet I just showed you, that's the most complicated one I've created. So that's Text Expander, one of a small handful of tools I use pretty much daily. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see me make a follow-up video, uh, maybe a tutorial, other ways I use the program, other programs I use, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. And if you're interested in buying Text Expander, uh, it's about 40 bucks a year as I record this, uh, please click through the link in the description below. I'll get a small commission for it at no extra cost to you. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you around.